Hello, bamboo lovers, and welcome back to Bamboo Batu here on YouTube. If you're crazy about bamboo like I am, subscribe to the channel, visit my website, bamboobatu.com. Tons of free info, lots of videos, lots of articles, great photos, fun stuff. Today I'm going to talk about a super hot topic that is bamboo and carbon credits. A lot of people trying to cash in on carbon credits like it's the next Bitcoin, um, but it's not the same as Bitcoin. It's it's a little easier to understand, if you ask me. But uh, if you're into like blockchain, then uh, check out Bitcoin. If you're into growing plants and walking in the forest like I am, then you might want to check out carbon credits from bamboo and anything else related to bamboo. Some of you might be feeling the effects of uh, climate change this summer. It's getting pretty hot uh, where I am. I know it's been pretty hot in a lot of other places. And uh, that's one more reason to be growing a lot of bamboo. And that's one more reason why carbon credits are in place to incentivize people to plant more bamboo on a large scale. So let's get into it. There's uh, a lot of different kinds of carbon credits out there. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of uh, what you call shenanigans in the carbon credit space. And there's a lot of different terminology floating around that can make it all even a little bit more confusing. So we're gonna start, uh, there's a lot of different places you can start when you explain carbon credits. One place to start is to explain the difference between carbon avoidance and carbon removal. Now, carbon avoidance is a good thing. That means you're avoiding the emissions of carbon. So, for example, if you start a solar energy farm, then you're generating electricity without emissions uh, that you have in fossil fuel related operations. So you're avoiding carbon, which is good. But carbon removal is even more important because there's tons and tons of carbon uh, CO2 in the atmosphere a lot more than we've had in the last several thousand years. And that's the leading uh, contributor to climate change as we know it. And so removing that carbon is super important. Uh, planting a, uh, setting up, sorry, uh, setting up a uh, solar energy operation is not gonna remove that carbon. It's gonna contribute less to it. But if you wanna actually remove it, then you need carbon removal, which could be uh, a lot of different types of things. One of them is growing trees and forests and bamboo. Bamboo absorbs CO2 faster than just about anything because of its incredibly fast growth rate. Um, as it metabolizes and photosynthesizes, it's absorbing all kinds of CO2 out of the atmosphere and storing it underground. And as that's measured, that's how we calculate the carbon credits. Uh, another thing to understand is the difference. Uh, there's a couple different types of uh, forestry planting carbon credits. Some of them have gotten some bad press lately. Um, we've got uh, a couple different categories. One of them is called ARR. That's short for something like afforestation, reforestation, and regeneration. That means you're going and planting new trees. There's a lot of guidelines around that where you have to do it the right way, planting on land that's degraded not uh, cutting down trees to plant new trees, not taking prime agricultural land and converting it into a forest, but using land that's not being used, it doesn't have value, and converting it into a forest, and you're generating um, a new forest that's gonna absorb lots of CO2. Uh, that's an ARR project. Um, on the other end, we've got what's called a RED Plus. Um, those types of projects, those are uh, a little bit more in the carbon avoidance category. Uh, check out the notes down below, by the way, if you're getting lost on all the terminology, you're going to have some, a decoder down there to help uh, afterwards. Uh, Red Plus project is when you're talking about protecting a forest and keeping it from being removed or, uh, or cut down. And that's an important thing to do, but it's really hard to measure and quantify how much difference you're making. So, for example, you've got people managing a forest, they're cutting, you know, 10 or 15% of their trees every year, and all of a sudden they want to go get carbon credits and say, hey, look, here's a forest. We're not cutting down more than 10 or 15% of our trees every year. Let's get some carbon credits and then cash in on carbon credits. But where's that carbon credit money going? It's not really changing anything. It didn't make any difference. They're still gonna do what they were doing before, except now they're making a lot of money on carbon credits. And so it lacks what we call additionality, which is a key word in the carbon credit space. There needs to be some additionality that those carbon credits are financing something that would not have happened without them. And so that is where a lot of the uh, fraudulent uh, uh, bad press and whatnot that came out about a year or two ago about these uh, South Pole and uh, uh, Vera projects, uh, some different forestation projects, their credits being not uh, quite as, as meaningful as they first appeared to be. So something to watch out for. So the ARR uh, is a better way to go. Um, 
a bit more reliable, a bit more on the carbon removal side of things. So when you're talking about bamboo, what's it take to get a bamboo carbon removal project going? Generally, you need some pretty big operation. We're looking at uh, several thousand uh, hectares of land and uh, maybe $100,000 or so in registration licensing fees to get the project approved and feasibility studies, uh, audits, uh, registration listings on, on the platforms. Uh, that's if we're talking about the two, uh, two of the biggest platforms would be uh, Vera and Gold Standard. Um, those are the, the big names. There's a lot of other new standards, a lot of small ones out there. Um, the carbon credit market is changing rapidly right now, so we don't know where those markets and platforms are going to be, uh, say, five years from now. But those seem to be a couple of the big names. Um, there's other ones out there that maybe charge less money. There's companies in, in Europe, for example, they license or they register their projects on a platform called Ankra, uh, which seems to be a good deal. Uh, it's a good deal for somebody. The registration licensing fees are a lot easier, uh, less cumbersome, less expensive. So they have a lot more small projects on their platform, which is good if you want to support small projects, but it does um, create some questions about the, the validity and the certainty and the robustness of those credits and, and how they're ver verified and validated. Um, they also sell their credits for somewhere around $100 or 100 euros per credit. That's one credit is equal to one equivalent of uh, CO2, uh, one ton of CO2 equivalent, that is. So uh, $100 per ton is a lot. Most of these ARR projects right now, the market is around 10 or $15 per credit. Um, it had been higher, it took a hit a couple of years ago when the, uh, the bad story came out in, in uh, The Guardian and, and the other, uh, other news about questioning the, uh, the validity and, and the reliability of these carbon projects. So uh, if you want a reliable, trustworthy credit, um, you might consider going on these more expensive platforms. It does require a large investment, large project, a lot of acreage. Um, it's hard to do on a small scale, but um, that's the way it is right now as far as I can tell. Another great way to generate carbon credits is uh, with biochar. The thing I like about biochar is it's got all these other co-benefits. You're not only trapping CO2 in the biomass uh, when you turn this, uh, these waste, waste biomass basically into something like charcoal, uh, and you bury it in the ground. So when it's, when, uh, say you, say you've got some bamboo, you're using the best parts of the bamboo here to make building material or, uh, any other number of products, furniture, chopsticks, who knows what. And they got a lot of like side pieces and end pieces and bits and bobs. Um, it could be from bamboo. It could be from a lot of other things. Uh, agricultural waste, the woody waste is going to be, uh, the best, uh, cooks better and has a higher carbon percentage. And so you're trapping that carbon. Um, after you've made your products and you've got your leftover stuff, if those leftover bits and, and residues just sit there on the side of the field, they're going to rot, decompose, and release all kinds of CO2, methane, greenhouse gases. And so by making it into biochar, you stop that decomposition and degradation. Uh, you lock the carbon in a stable state and you keep it from going in, uh, into the atmosphere, which is great. So the plant has absorbed all the CO2 and now you're trapped it in there. Uh, which is great in itself, but then you put that stuff into the ground, that biochar, and you've added all this carbon into the ground, and this material that's like a hotel for microorganisms, it's got all these tiny little nooks and crannies, uh, super high porosity that it helps with moisture retention, mineral re nutrient retention, uh, works wonders for the soil improvement, uh, get higher yields, uh, less irrigation, less fertilization, really good stuff. And then you can also measure that carbon much more easily when you're measuring how much carbon is in your biochar. You know, you do a test on your biochar, maybe it's 75%, 80% carbon. Uh, you've got a ton of biochar, you know exactly how much carbon that is when you put it into the ground, uh, as opposed to when you're measuring how much carbon is in, in your tree or your bamboo. It's hard to say, there's a lot of CO2 being absorbed here, but when you want to put a number on it, it gets pretty tricky. And that's part of why it's so expensive to get these projects registered and, and audited and approved. But with biochar, it's considerably easier. Uh, still with some paperwork involved. There is a lot of documentation. Uh, we want to make sure that these projects are legit and they're really doing what they say they're doing, that they're using eligible biomass, not cutting down trees to make biochar, for example, and then claiming that they've done something good for the environment. But uh, using waste products and then making sure that biochar goes into the soil 
biochar is very similar to charcoal, so you can actually burn it like charcoal. And so we want to make sure that's not happening, of course, because then it's all the stuff going back in the atmosphere. So there's a few good things to know about there. Uh, carbon removal, carbon avoidance, ARR, Red Plus. Uh, we got Ancra, we got uh, Gold Standard, we got Vera, we got Additionality. Uh, a lot of other terms floating around out there. If you want to know more about carbon credits, uh, set up a consultation. We'll talk about it. Lots of good ways to do it. Lots of good reasons to grow bamboo. And have a great summer. And make the best of everything. Thanks for watching. See you next time.